Good morning, you wonderful people. It's another day. It's really cloudy today. I'm not holding out much hope for the weather, although 70% chance of rain here yesterday was one quick shower, so I don't think they have quite the same understanding as I do. But hey ho, we'll see how that goes. Again, well prepared just in case. The sun's definitely trying to sneak through the clouds, so hopefully it'll brighten up a little bit later. Um, today we are heading to Belém. I am once again in Plaza de Comercio. I think I'm getting better at saying that. I hope so. I end up here pretty much every day. It's like the main hub. I met one of the girls on the tour yesterday, Francesca. She's just in the tourist information getting a Lisbon card. It can be really useful if you want to go into different museums. It includes transport costs uh, for a set price. So if you're going to do a lot of things, that can be worth it. Personally, I'm on quite a tight budget for this trip and I would rather not, so I've got a metro ticket that you can reload, so I'd rather just pay for things individually. I don't really want to go into all the museums, so for me it's not worth it, but each to their own. Um, so we're going to head down to Belém together. You take the 15 tram from this square, this side, there we go, up here. So it's about a 20 minute ride. So we'll get there, we've got a walking tour booked. Again, love my free walking tours. I've got one pretty much every day this week, so um, we'll see what this one's like. But yeah, looking forward to it and we'll just have a bit of exploration on that side of town. So come with me, enjoy the journey and see what we can find. So one of the first stops of our walking tour is at Peche de Belém. Um, so I did have one yesterday, but these are the original ones and they are warm and fresh and they give you little packets of cinnamon and icing sugar to pop on top. So I'm going to enjoy this and then continue with the tour. Welcome to Belém Tower. So the last time I saw you, I was just about to have my Pashtunata. So they are made locally here in Belém. It's where they originated. First made by the monks in the Monastero. Um, it was so good. I had two. I couldn't resist. So my count so far is three Pashtunata Belém. They're absolutely delicious. At this one, they were they were nicer than the ones I had in the town centre. So they were still warm, the pastry was super crispy, the custard was a bit thicker, it was so good. Definitely recommend if you come down to Berlin, have to, have to, have to have the pastéis that are traditional here. Nowhere else can call them pastéis de Berlin. It's like champagne, the rest are just pastel de nata. Um, same thing, but it, this is the proper place and it's definitely worth the trip. The tour itself, I'm not going to lie, could have been a bit better. I went with High Lisbon Tours. Um, there are a few other tour companies that do it, but only in certain languages at certain times. This was the most convenient for me, but compared to yesterday's tour, I didn't learn a lot. The guide wasn't as engaging, don't get me wrong, she was nice enough, um, but I felt like the tour could have taken half the time that it did. Belém itself is quite a smallish neighbourhood from all like the main touristy bits are. It's the area of discovery from when all the Portuguese were setting out to explore the world and conquering 
the world basically. Um, so it started from this point. So it's got lots of museums. Um, this is a Belém Tower just behind me. It's on the Tagus River. It used to be like part way into the river but since then the land has obviously moved out a bit so it's just off the coast. Um, it was a watchtower and there were more across the river unfortunately those ones are no longer there but this one still exists it's a museum you can pay five euros to go up um, apparently it used to be used as a prison to host um, dignitaries from different places I'm personally not going up um, but the option is there one of my friends got a Lisboa card and she's gone into the Monastero um, and doing a few different bits that's also included but not worth it for me but it's nice to come and sit and have a look and get some good photos so Belém I would say is definitely worth visiting but you don't need to spend a full day here a couple of hours should do it if you have a good guide in the city centre like yesterday we learned bits about this so I didn't really need to do it or you can find bits of information online unless you particularly want to know a lot of in-depth things about this area then you can just visit, take some pictures, it's quite a nice stroll along the waterfront depending on what the weather wants to do so that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a slow walk back get some videos, get some pictures and head back towards the city um, hopefully it does not rain Monument of Discovery. We stopped here on our tour earlier. Um, this is where I learned the most interesting stuff. So on the side of the statue there's different people who were all related to when Portugal set out to discover the world. Um, it's what this whole part of town is really based on. They had different expositions, exhibitions um, and we've ended up with that now. So you can go up in the monument again with that um, but if you go up you'll get a good view over this map behind me so you can get a pretty good view of it from the ground and the map is actually a gift from South Africa and it shows the sailing ships that the Portuguese used in the Discovery Age and the route and the map of where they went with their colonies so it shows the route around Africa, obviously across to Brazil and around to India and on one of the statues on the front of the ship were, is Vasco da Gama who was obviously one of the pioneers of um, the explorations around the world. So yeah, bit of history. Um, this is the kind of stuff I like. I love maps and this one is really quite stunning so let's have a look. So I am outside Monasterio de los Geronimos. Um, it's one of the main attractions in Belém. Absolutely stunning monastery inside apparently. You do have to pay for tickets to go in, um, which I'm not gonna do, but one of my friends did and she really liked it. When you go in, this is the entrance. There's two sides. So on the left hand side as you go in, that's prepaid tickets for the monastery and that's this area behind me that you get to see. On the other side, there's another entrance for an archeological museum. Um, however, if you want something to do for free, that's also pretty good. When you go in, queue on the right hand side and you can visit the church for free. Um, I don't like filming or taking pictures in churches, so I didn't get any footage from in there, but it's a really pretty church. They've got lots of statues um, that are really highly decorated. 
they also have like some really nice stained glass and as you go in on the left hand side you've got the tomb of Vasco da Gama and on the right hand side you've got the tomb of Luis de Camões so you've got the poet and the explorer and so that's something quite nice to see that I wasn't expecting to see today so yeah highly recommend visiting that this trip just seems to be tired and hungry like the meal times everyone kind of eats lunch later and doesn't eat dinner till like eight nine o'clock at night which I do find bizarre and I still find bizarre however I kind of understand it because I've not been eating lunch till like four or five o'clock in the afternoon evening and that is so bizarre for me and my poor stomach can't cope um, I'm not used to not eating so today from breakfast at like eight o'clock until four all i had was three pastries and i'm not drinking enough water either so yeah this is a side of travel that you don't necessarily see as much but it's there like it can't all be about seeing all these sites constantly like it's draining it's exhausting don't get me wrong i'm having a really good time but i am knackered i've not walked as much today um, but still like done a solid amount doing a walking tour. I popped on the tram just a few stops down to LX factory. Lisbon's answer to Camden, um, but not as big, not as good. They've got restaurants, they've got a few like trendier shops and bars. Like someone recommended it to me, so stopped there, grabbed Mexican, clearly. It was actually really, really good, definitely filled the hole and Lando, oh, their chocolate cake to die for. I just had that and a bit of a nice coffee to kind of perk me up. Try to wake me up. I don't think it's doing a very good job, so I'm very sleepy. So I'm about to hop onto the tram to get right back into the city centre and I'm just gonna chill at the hostel. They've got a Portuguese night tonight, so it's different tapas and drinks and a bit of fado. So I'm looking forward to that. If I can make it to nine o'clock, might need a bit of a nap first. I may not have got the best seat. Mm, but let me know. And I'll... Cool. And we are back. It's now Wednesday morning. Yesterday afternoon was a bit of a strange one. On the way back to the hostel, I did not feel well. I think it's a combination of all this walking up and down hills, not eating properly and not drinking enough water. So I had a crazy bad headache, got back to the hostel, had like an hour long nap, um, felt a little bit better and joined in the tapas night. Everyone else drank wine, I sat sipping my water, uh, but it was nice to just chill and chat to people at the hostel. There were about 10, 12 of us having the meal and then about 20 of us went out to a fado show afterwards. So fado is the traditional music, mostly women singing it, like ballads, um, but we did have some fun ones in there as well. So I only stayed for a couple of songs. I got to bed about midnight, um, but did, I'm glad I saw it. It was worth it. Not particularly my cup of tea, but do recommend because it's one of the biggest cultural things to do while here. Today is my chill day, so I've had a crazy busy two days. The next couple of days are going to be quite busy as well. So today is just see where my feet take me, no tours specifically. So I think I'm going to go inside the Museo Archeologico do Carmo. Um, it's a museum, it used to be a monastery when the earthquake happened. So earthquake, fire and tsunami in one day. It was All Saints Day and everyone was in the churches and obviously not the best place during an earthquake, 9.1 on the scale, so a lot of people died inside the churches, the roofs all collapsed, 
and most of the city was rebuilt afterwards to exactly how it was before. So one of the reasons all the buildings look exactly the same on the front is because that's the way it was designed and you can't actually change that still to this day. You have to like get permission and everything to change the facades. Um, but this monastery museum, they have left it as it is, so it still stands, but the roof is still collapsed. It doesn't have a roof. So I'm going to have a look around, see what we can find inside the museum, hopefully learn a little bit more about the history and then see how we feel after as to where we head afterwards. euros to get into the museum. Um, the museum itself isn't worth it particularly unless you're really into like some old artifacts. There's not much going on inside but the building itself is absolutely stunning and that alone for me was worth the entrance cost. So yeah definitely recommend while you're there as well make sure you pop to Santa Justa elevator. You don't have to go up in the elevator there's stairs behind it, just went and stopped a little bit, definitely worth it. Heading back down now and I'm going to head towards the Time Out Market for some food at a reasonable hour of the day today, so hopefully that all works out. came out of the market I just wanted to sit by the waterfront like sit on the riverside and just chill and take some time and you know contemplate it with your thoughts enjoy it like I'm on holiday it's been pretty non-stop the whole time I've been here and this is like a little rest day in the middle um, but sometimes you forget that when you travel solo it's not always the best experience like I love tra solo travel and you meet so many like-minded people and it's wonderful but there's always those little moments that remind you you've got to be really cautious so I just sat like a bit further down from the main square in the main bit after like two minutes of sitting on my own some guy came up to me and started talking to me and it was too friendly um, and I felt really uncomfortable so I quickly like ended that conversation, got up and moved somewhere a bit more crowded. I just don't understand why people think that's okay to creep on people, especially women. The whole, oh are you on your own, are you travelling solo, um, when are you here till, how old are you, do you have a boyfriend? Like no, it's not good, it's not acceptable and I shouldn't, as a grown ass woman, have to feel the need to lie and say oh I'm about to go meet my friends oh, I've got a boyfriend back home and I don't like that I have to do that and I shouldn't have to do that but when will people realize that it's not okay it's not acceptable so yeah that's kind of put a little bit of a downer on my day I don't let it get to me like these things happen but they shouldn't and that's the point I'm trying to make is in this day and age, why do things like that still happen? Um, 
but now I'm back in like the main square around a lot of people around a lot more tourists I definitely feel a bit safe a bit more comfortable like I didn't feel completely unsafe but didn't like where that was heading at all so nip it in the bud get straight out but yeah it's a shame that these things happen a lot more than you kind of realize um, just wanted to draw attention to that really like solo travel is fantastic highly recommend but always and it shouldn't come with a safety warning <laughs> it really shouldn't but it does have to unfortunately like know what's right know when you feel uncomfortable and if you have to dash off to meet your friends um, then you do if because if people know you're on your own then they can target you more and it's not great it's not ideal um, so yeah it's very sad that I have to make these warnings <laughs> but please whatever you do just be careful be safe and know oh, pigeon, um, know where you need to go and what you need to do to get yourself out of those situations or avoid them in the first place sorry for the downer um, I think I'm gonna head back to the hostel just for a little bit. It's about two o'clock. I've eaten. I feel good in that side of things. Um, but I've done. I've done pretty much most of the town. I do want to go up back to Alfama and to the viewpoints, but I'd rather save that for a little bit later. Today, again, the weather just doesn't know what it wants to do. It's very cloudy. It's very kind of yellow. It's bizarre, absolutely bizarre weather today. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get much of a sunset, but I'd rather take like an hour or two now to chill in the hostel and then head back out to the viewpoints a bit later and try to get a bit of a sunset. I will pick you back up a bit later once I've decided where I'm actually going. <laughs> so it's 20 to 11. I'm just kind of going through my videos before I go to bed. And I realized I said, I would catch up with you later. And I never did. So hi, this is me from later catching up. So I did come back to the hostel for a bit. On the way, I definitely did stop for a coffee and a pastel donata. It would be rude not to try all of them in the city. Every single last one. Yeah, the tally for the week is definitely growing a bit. After that, I just chilled in the hostel for an hour or two before heading back out later, learnt that the reason everything is so yellow is because we've got a sandstorm from the Sahara Desert that's currently covering the entirety of Europe. So that's fun. That's why everything's been crazy cloudy and yellow and everything's just turning out very strange colours in my photos. And some of the videos, they'll definitely like keep jumping between colours. Um, yeah, it's one of those things. I really, really want the sky to break through the clouds tomorrow. Um, I'm going out to Sintra for the day to see the castles and the views. So if I can actually see the views, I would really appreciate it. Um, speaking of views, that's what I did this evening. I went out about four o'clock. The weather was getting worse. It was very windy, very cold. But I climbed all the way up to the highest viewpoints, Nuestra Señora del Monte. The viewpoints throughout the city are called Miradoros. And there's loads of them, especially in the Alfama district, so towards the castle. Um, this one overlooked the castle as well, so... There was even an escalator on the street, so I'll pop a clip of that in. Wasn't expecting to see that, but honestly, it helped half the journey at least. It was definitely worth it. If you're in Lisbon, definitely go up to that one. You can see over the whole city, yellow sky, blue sky, white sky, whatever colour um it's really really lovely and then i took like a stroll back down through the old town to um another viewpoint <laughs> which is portas del sol so like the sun doors and that's a really nice one it's where i went the other day and i just sat had a beer enjoyed the view got very beaten by the wind because obviously you're quite exposed <laughs> um but yeah it's definitely worth it and then snuggled back in the hostel got a takeout pizza from across the road sometimes you just got to give in i've got a salad in the fridge still waiting for me um but 
today was not one of them days. So, yeah, little treat. Played cards with some guys in the hostel, so it's been very nice and very chill. Now I am definitely ready for bed. I've got quite a big day ahead tomorrow, so I'll be going up early to take the train to Sintra. Um, I've got a walking tour in the morning and then need to catch the bus to get up to Pena Palace. So I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to that. But again, it's going to be a lot more walking, even more hills. Um, so I want to get a good rest before all of that. So hopefully I'll catch you in Sintra in the morning, providing I remember to record this time. So I'll see you then.